Good day to you. My name is Kalen, and today I will be sharing with you how to replace thermal pads and paste on a pre LHR 3080 by Gigabyte. And I will be documenting the performance differences. Here are my six 3080s. Right, take a look here. One of them is mining Ergo and it's perfectly fine pulling 270 watts running at 56 degrees Celsius. The other five are mining Ethereum. And as you can see, I have two of them that are running fairly hot relative to the others. So I'm gonna pull one of these off at a time, replace the thermal pads. Let's go. Alrighty, I took out this GPU. Let's take a little look see here. As you can see there are four and now instead of two running over 100 degrees Celsius there's only one. So after this one I'll have one left. Now a few things you'll need to complete this job is going to be some 91% alcohol, cotton swabs and q-tips, thermal paste, and of course thermal pads. Now I went with the gelid solutions because of the fact that their thermal conductivity is way up on a 15 and i believe the next highest under this was a 13.8 or so so i went with these now i got a variety pack um i notice most people in the videos that do these like to use three millimeter however i'm going to show you that these are way too thick two millimeter is actually the ones that you're supposed to use and i chose Thermal light TF8 because it has a thermal conductivity of 13.8, way higher than what goes on most CPUs. This is thermal takes, and they only have 3.3. Garbage. So I've made a little template here to remind me where all my screws go. And here we go. All right, let's get these screws taken out. Now before I pull this apart, notice that there is a plug down in here that we have to get to, right there, as well as two of them right here. Now I like to start on the side with the two, and gently pull this whole thing apart, just like that. Now very quickly, I'm gonna pop these out. Some of them can be stiff at times. This one's a little stiff, there it goes. Wiggle it out a little bit and there we go. Now, there we are. Okay, let's set this both sides down nice and even. Grab this last one here. Alrighty. Now let's take a little observation here. All this oil, you gotta wipe this nice and clean, get all this up. All this oil right here, this residue, and clean this thing up. Now these outside ones here are not bad. They're still nice and gooey. But these right here, very toast. They got uh, oil leaking all over this entire place. You can see that right there, so. These right here all look good. They're still not that bad. Probably just going to leave those and replace these. So what I wanna do is get most of this oily residue off first. Get a little alcohol, try to clean the residue off. Now 
Now just to thoroughly show you guys the thickness. Okay. This is a three millimeter pad. See how much thicker that is? That is unbelievably thicker. I don't know how you guys are using three millimeter pads. Crazy. Two millimeter pad. Exact same size. Okay, two millimeter pads, guys. Now these right here on the outside are one millimeter pads. Okay, and I see guys putting two millimeters on these also, and that's how, guys, how. Look at this, look at this. Two millimeter, one millimeter on the sides, okay. All right, now, easy way to take these off, you get you a nice clean little blade here, you get at the edge, you just get up under it enough, just a little hair, no pressure, you're not trying to mess this copper plate up which you can probably do very easily. Now this thing is already crispy, crunchy, hard, and does not really want to come up. That's how you know it's toast. This thing is probably gonna come off in different pieces because it's toast. I can feel it. I can feel it so brittle it's about to break apart. It's supposed to be nice and floppy. Oh, okay, we got away with it though without breaking. Mm, this one's extra tough right here. This is fairly crunchy, you guys. Ooh. Ooh. Now gently just get the thick part of the paste off. We're not grinding into this copper, guys. It's very clean, easy spot. Wipe this off nice and clean, you guys. Now you see how that copper is still nice and clean? I didn't go all crazy and scratch it up. That's how you want to do it, nice and clean, just like that. Now also take notice this copper plate has markings on it as to where these pads go exactly and it makes it easy for you to measure it out I'm gonna also add a couple additional behind this board behind the CPU I will be adding a couple extra pads there's only these three screws here that hold this entire plate on and once you get the three screws out this whole plate comes off and then you simply reach underneath there's a tab slightly wiggle it There's one, there's the other, and done. Now, underneath these is where the pads are gonna go, but you don't have to worry about lining them up precisely because, just like on the copper plate, if you look on the back of this plate, there are markings to show you exactly where they go. Now, once you have these, you just plug this back in right here. Put in these three screws right back in here. Now if we take a close look at the gap, you'll see that um, this two millimeter pad, if it was any thicker, uh, I don't know how the screws would close down you guys out there using those three millimeter pads. How? Cause uh, there's barely any space in there, but these two millimeters perfect. It's gonna allow you to screw all the way down just like you're supposed to real nice. 
Now something I think that people did not in the other videos cover all that well was how much thermal paste to put on here. And I'm gonna show you how little I use, just enough to cover the metal, but very, very thin, very thin. And there we have it, completely covered, but very, very thin. Not so much where it's going to be over piling on the edges like it was before, like you see here. This is some really high quality thermal paste, so you don't need a whole lot like that. You can wipe all the excess off. Leave a little bit right here in the center to smear out for when it touches and smashes onto the rest of it on that copper plate. But as you can see, very, very thin, very thin. Don't overdo it, you guys. Now that we have that, we're going to plug back in. I recommend doing the single one first because you can then flip this up like so. And without touching everything together, you can very easily pop this in here. There's number one. There's number two. All right, now what I like to do is set this down very gently so that I cannot drop the top down so that we don't smear the new thermal paste. And now what I'm doing is lining up these two little holes right here, as well as the rest of them I'm lining up overhead. And now that I have them lined up, I'm gonna to gently drop this down just barely setting it on there so that I can put the screws in. Now, I'm going to start with these little screws here just to hold it in place. And before I put everything in, I'm gonna see where I'm at. So not tight, just snug to hold this in place as well as the outside screws. We're just gonna put in there enough just to hold this thing together while we check out what it looks like. All right, let's see. Now we got this thing there. Let's look at our spacing. Gonna double check that space between the thermal pads. Look at that, perfect, perfect. I don't know how you guys fit them three millimeters in there. There's no space for a three millimeter. But um, two millimeters, perfect. Ooh, look at that space between the CPU. Ooh, perfect. That's how you want it. Now let's put these rest of these screws. Oh, real quick, I forgot to mention, you want to double check that all these are clipped in very nice. Nothing's in the way, nothing's smashed, everything's looking good. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And there she is, complete. Let's put her back in the rig and see how she performs all six gpus plugged back in and running let's see the stats now of course we got this one over here this is the ergo so nothing's gonna change but they're still warming up so give them a minute she's warmed up now let's see so the ergo the usual 55 degrees celsius 270 watts now this is where we oh yeah look at those numbers now before see there's only one red one left to change now not only has the hash rate observe the hash rate has gone up way but now this is what all the other temperatures were reading around 110 degrees celsius and after i changed all the thermal pads this is where we're at 
So on three of them, I have dropped over 30 degrees Celsius. Actually, on all four of them that I've changed, I've it's dropped over 30 degrees Celsius. One more and this bad boy will be running very strong. Altogether, 443 mega hashes, call it. And a total of 1243 watts. Much better, much better. Very nice, very nice. Performance is outstanding now. Job is completed. Now you guys can see a true before and after change in the thermo pads. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you learned something, smash the like. Next video, I will be changing out thermal pads on my 1060s because these things have gotten pretty hot now that the past year, you know, it's, it's just about that time. So, see you guys in the next video.